Hello everybody. Uh, I wanted to give you just a, a few notes and get you thinking and started on a lab that you are going to do tomorrow. Uh, this is a PowerPoint that I received at a workshop last year um, that I think really does a good job of explaining exactly what we're doing. They're called phylogenetic trees. In your textbook they're called cladograms or branching diagrams. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call them cladograms or branching diagrams, but phylogenetic trees are another way of saying it. So what are we saying here? Well first, this is a family tree and everybody has one. Um, this happens to be a family tree from the soap opera Days of Our Lives. I unfortunately know that because I remember Bo and Hope from when I was a little kid, but this is a family tree from that show. Here is another family tree, and it is a family tree for Charles Darwin. So there is his dad, there is his grandfather, so and then here's his other grandfather and grandmother, and then his mom. So Charles Darwin and his mom and dad, his grandparents, and then we see how all sorts of other things, um, how other people are related to him. Well, okay, as Homer says, he knows what a family tree is, but what is a cladogram or a phylogenetic tree? Well, here is wh what we're talking about, and we've been saying this in class. It all goes back to common ancestors. We have a common ancestor with a whale, and it lived back here. Well, lizards have a common ancestor with birds. That common ancestor lived here. But all four of them have a common ancestor that lived longer ago. This is just a generic drawing, but it's thought that, and because of all the evidence we've talked about, um, common bone structures, DNA, the way the embryos look early in their development, fossils, put it all together and it's thought that the common ancestor of whales, humans, lizards, and birds looks something like this. This is a cladogram or a branching diagram or a phylogenetic tree. Notice it always just branches into two. It doesn't branch into five, six things at once. There always are just simple breaks that go into two things. So here's a phylogenetic tree or cladogram for butterflies. These two butterflies have a common ancestor. These two butterflies have a common ancestor. But these four have a common ancestor. These five have a common ancestor. These seven have a common ancestor. Ten have a common ancestor. Eleven. Twelve. All of these have a common ancestor, but how far back is how closely they were related. The more recent the common ancestor, the more closely they are related to each other. The farther back the common ancestor, so this one and this one, and these two actually, they're farthest removed from each other because their common ancestor lived longest ago. This is the phylogenetic tree or cladogram for the entire tree of life. I will come back and show this to you at the end of the PowerPoint, but this shows every, this shows 3,000 species. These are not like little sticks on this circle. Those are words of species. And you can see right here it says, you are here. Homo sapiens are right there. But notice, this is just a giant cladogram that shows 3,000 species. Notice animals, plants, fungi, protists, the four kingdoms in eukarya, and then bacteria and archaea are down here. So there are the three domains that we've talked about of life, and then there are the four kingdoms within eukarya. So if we want to construct phylogeny or ph phylogenetic tree, demonstrate the relationship of several, how would we go about doing that? Well, we would look at structures, just like we've said in class. These are all dogs. Well, they're related to each other. 
Well, these are all butterflies, and they're all related to each other. But these two are most closely related. That one is next. That one is farthest. So they're all related. They all have a common ancestor, but these three have a common ancestor, and these two have a common ancestor. And then, obviously, DNA. We keep saying DNA is the absolute final, final nail in the coffin of evolution doesn't exist. Um, because DNA is just, it shows everything. Matter of fact, here's an example. This is the DNA strand from a human 18S gene. This is one G gene, and those letters are the strand uh, in that gene of the DNA code. This is the same gene from a frog. The green sections are where they line up. So where you see a gap, which I believe, if you see a gap, the letters aren't the same. So there are some gaps, but look how much of the same DNA, the same gene in a frog and a human are identical to each other. Here's another tree of life. Um, once again, eukaryotes, archaea, and bacteria. And notice there are always just a single branch where it goes in two directions. Now, these trees, these branching diagrams, can have different appearances. These are f six different trees that also show the same thing. They all are the same tree, but how we draw it can be a little different. We can use like a, a triangle way, we can use a circle way, a square, um, we can put a little bit more angle into it, but if you closely study these six, they're all the same. These are just another way of doing things, but notice they all basically look very similar. And this is right out of Darwin's book. When Darwin started thinking about evolution by natural selection, um, he started thinking, and he even says, I think that this is what happens. We have a common ancestor, it branches. Now his branches have three branches. We now know we can't do that, but we, this, Darwin thought of this. And even before DNA, Darwin kind of started thinking this is my, maybe what was gonna happen. And then here's a, another example of how this works. So Homer says, if I'm gonna build one of these, it must be hard. Well, think of it like a walk through the woods. You are going to do a lab tomorrow, and you're going to do this. You're going to make a cladogram. Okay? Think about the Simpsons, Homer, Marge, Bart, and Lisa going on a trip, going on a walk through the woods. All of them walk by letter A. So they all pick up the letter A. Homer and Marge turn left. Bart and Lisa turn right. So Homer and Marge pick up a B and now have an A and a B. Bart and Lisa pick up a C. So they have the letters A and C. Then Homer turns left. Marge turns right. Bart turns left, Lisa turns right. So by the time they get to the end of their path, Homer has picked up letters A, B, and D. Marge has picked up letters A, B, and E. Bart has picked up letters A, C, and F. And Lisa has picked up letters A, C, and G. But here's the trick. If we didn't know the path, could we figure out what they had walked by? Well, look at the letters. They've all walked by A. So we would know that they all have that trait. Just like all mammals have fur. That would be a common ancestor way back here of all animals have fur. Well, Homer and Marge walked by B, so we know that they walked down a common path. And then they both walk down different paths. So we should be able to put this path together based on their letters. You are going to do that with these eight cards. 
You can study this as all, all you want tonight and maybe even come to class tomorrow with a plan. But if you were to draw a phylogenetic tree, a cladogram, a branching diagram, look at these shapes. Look at these shapes as though they were a trait. I will give you a, a hint to get you started. All eight of these cards have a common trait. So all of them, going back in our PowerPoint, all of them, just like the Simpsons all walked by letter A, all of our cards are walking by a certain shape. All right? So the rules tomorrow, you got to complete the entire hike. You cannot stop part of the way down a path. When the path branches, it can only branch into two paths, never three or more. Once two paths have branched off from one another, they can never reunite and come back together. And check-in stations, where they pick up the letters or the shapes, are located along straightaways between the branching points. You're never going to have a shape or a letter at a branch. It's always going to be along a straight pathway. So there are the shapes again. And that's the lab we're doing tomorrow. So this is your family tree. Your this oh sorry, this is not your family tree. Your grandfather turned into your grandfather, turned into your father, turned into you. This is your tree. You are here. You have a common ancestor called your great grandparents that you share with your second cousins. You have a common common ancestors called your grandparents that you share with your cousins. You have common ancestors called your parents that you share with your siblings. That's your family tree. That's not your family tree. Just like the common picture of a monkey turning into a more upright thing, turning into a human walking all the way upright, is very misleading. This is not evolution. A fish did not turn into a salamander, turned into a cat, turned into you. What this saying is you're down here, humans. Well, we have a common ancestor with fish. Well, that common ancestor is the common ancestor of all vertebrates. We have a common ancestor with amphibians and cats. That is an an that's an ancestor that has a vertebrae, vertebrate, but it has four legs. Well, we share a common ancestor with a cat because that common ancestor is the common ancestor of all mammals. So here's the common ancestor of all four of them. This is the con common ancestor of three of them, and this is the common ancestor of two of them. Notice how these two things look very similar to each other. The final thing I would like you to do, if you can, and I'll just show you a few, I went to Google and typed tree of life cladogram. Here is one example. And just scroll through this. First life form ever, and how that has branched off into prokaryotes, plants, um, arthropods, uh, fish, reptiles, birds, mammals. So there are humans. And notice that it's always just a branch that goes two different ways. Here is another one. And another one. And another one. And another one. Um... This one shows of another way of doing it. Here's the one from the PowerPoint. I'd like to go show you this because if we scroll, once again, we see just a whole bunch of different cladograms. There's that one again. But, and then here's this one again. But right under, we can click a full resolution. And there are humans. I can now, within this PDF, I can scroll. I can magnify and look, here we are, keep going and make this thing even bigger, move it over, keep making it bigger, and there are Homo sapiens, and you can see there's a branch, now these are all scientific names, so I'm not exactly sure, but I just about guarantee you one of these is probably chimpanzees 
there are three other species that we are very closely related to because we share a common ancestor back here with them. And then a couple of them are even closer related and two of them are even closer related than even we are to them because we share a common ancestor or they share a common ancestor closer than we share a common ancestor. But even we share a common ancestor even farther back with a lot more, a lot other species. So, um, let me try to find one more other one that you may like because you can just check all these out but here is a nice one to show this is the common ancestor of all vertebrates but sharks have a cartilage skeleton these all have a bony skeleton all of these things have four limbs so there's that common ancestor these all have an amniotic egg these have hair. These have, uh, I'm not exactly sure what that means, but all primates and rabbits, all mammals have hair, so there are primates. We could then have a branch, another branch, and show apes and humans. The farther back, but notice every time it just branches into two, and the more farther back we go, the more unrelated we are. We're related, but not as much. The closer the common ancestor is, the more we are related to each other.